हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल ऑन इंजीनियरिंग मैथमेटिक्स दिस वीडियो इज कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ माय प्रीवियस वीडियो इन विच वी सॉल्व सेवरल इंटीग्रल्स विद द हेल्प ऑफ बीटा फंक्शन हियर आल्सो वी विल सी सम मोर एग्जांपल्स दैट कैन बी सॉल्व यूजिंग बीटा फंक्शन लेटस फर्स्ट रिवाइज सेवरल डेफिनेशन ऑफ बीटा फंक्शन वी डिफाइन फॉर एम कॉमा एन ग्रेटर दैन जीरो beta of mn as an integral of x raised to m minus 1 into 1 minus x raised to n minus 1 dx over the limit 0 to 1 in short beta of mn is equal to this integral we call this definition as first form of beta of m comma n if we substitute x is equal to sin square theta in this form we will get the second form of beta function which is given by following statement integral of sin raised to p theta into cos raised to q theta d theta over the limit 0 to pi by 2 is equal to half beta of p plus 1 by 2 comma q plus 1 by 2 similarly third form of beta function is given by integral of x raised to m minus 1 upon 1 plus x raised to m plus n dx over the limit 0 to infinity so let's go ahead with examples Here we are asked to prove value of the integral x minus a raised to m into b minus x raised to n dx over the limit a to b is b minus a raised to m plus n plus one into beta of m plus one comma n plus one. You can consider this statement as a formula to evaluate many such integrals with various values of a and b. So let us see proof of this statement. First, we consider this LHS integral as i. Then to solve this, we substitute x minus a is equal to b minus a into t. Now let's differentiate both the sides. Derivative of x is dx. Derivative of a is zero. So on LHS we will have only dx. And on RHS, derivative of b minus a into t is b minus a dt. So dx is b minus a into dt. now let's find values for t when values of x are a and b when we substitute x is equal to a in this statement we see a minus a that is 0 upon b minus a that is again 0 is equal to t so we see t is equal to 0 when x is a similarly when we substitute x is equal to b here this b minus a and this b minus a will get cancel and we see t is equal to 1 therefore when x is equal to b t is equal to 1 now let us calculate value of b minus x here keeping this b as it is value of x can be written from this statement x will be equal to a plus b minus a t so when we substitute value of x over here we have b minus x is equal to b minus a minus b minus a t now this b minus a and b minus a are common terms when we take them out we have b minus a into 1 minus t these are the limits of t that we have seen now let's transform this integral i from x to t so this integral i can be now written as integral from 0 to 1 into x minus a raised to m can be written as b minus a raised to m into t raised to m b minus x raised to n can be written as b minus a raised to n into 1 minus t raised to n and finally this dx can be written as b minus a into dt now let us take out the constant terms here constant terms are b minus a raised to m b minus a raised to n and b minus a raised to 1 so when we multiply these constant terms we have outside b minus a raised to m plus n plus 1 and inside the integral we will be left with t raised to m into 1 minus t raised to n into dt over the limit 0 to 1 but this is nothing but first form of beta function according to which 
we can write value of this integral as beta of m plus 1 comma n plus 1 like this which is required RHS hence value of this integral is b minus a raised to m plus n plus 1 into beta of m plus 1 comma n plus 1. Now let me show you similar example with some real values for a and b. Look at here. Here we are asked to prove value of the integral of x minus 5 raised to 5 into 6 minus x raised to 6 dx over the limit 5 to 6 is equal to beta of 6 comma 7. Let us see its solution. First we label this integral as i. Then we substitute x minus 5 as 6 minus 5 t. But 6 minus 5 is 1. So 1 into t is t. So value of x minus 5 is t. From this one can find value of x. So x will be given by 5 plus t. Therefore dx can be given by only dt. Now let's calculate value of 6 minus x. So 6 minus x will be as I discussed x is 5 plus t. So 6 minus x is 6 minus 5 minus t. But 6 minus 5 is 1. So we have 1 minus t as value of 6 minus x. Now let us talk about limits of t. When x is 5, 5 minus 5 is 0. So we get t is equal to 0. When x is 6, 6 minus 5 is 1. So we get t is equal to 1. So limits of t will vary from 0 to 1. Now let's transform integral i. Integral i can be given by integral from 0 to 1. x minus 5 raised to 5 is t raised to 5. 6 minus x is 1 minus t. So 6 minus x raised to 6 is 1 minus t raised to 6. And dx is just dt. And now see that this integral is in the first form of beta of m comma n. So by that definition value of this integral can be written as beta of 5 plus 1 comma 6 plus 1. That is beta of 6 comma 7. Hence proof. I hope you understood this solution. And now I have a practice example for you. Here you are asked to prove value of this integral is twice gamma of 1 by 4 whole square upon 3 root pi. Here you might need to use the relation between beta gamma functions as well as the properties of gamma function. So let us go ahead with next example. Here you are asked to prove beta of m comma n plus 1 plus beta of m plus 1 comma n is equal to beta of m comma n. Let us proceed with LHS part. At this point, I recall relation between beta and gamma function, which is beta of m comma n is gamma m into gamma n upon gamma m plus n. So using this relation, we can write beta m comma n plus 1 as gamma m into gamma n plus 1 upon gamma m plus n plus 1. Similarly, beta m plus 1 comma n can be written as gamma m plus 1 into gamma n upon gamma m plus n plus 1. Now we recall the property of gamma function which states gamma n plus 1 is n into gamma n. So this gamma n plus 1 can be written as n into gamma n. Similarly gamma m plus 1 can be written as m into gamma m and this denominator gamma m plus n plus 1 can be written as m plus n into gamma m plus n. Now let us take out the common terms. Here common terms are gamma m into gamma n upon gamma m plus n into m plus n. So after taking them out, we are left with only n plus m. Now this m plus n will get cancelled with m plus n in the denominator and we are left with only gamma m into gamma n upon gamma m plus n. But by definition, this is nothing but beta of m comma n as the required RHS. Hence proof.
let us see another such example here we are asked to prove beta of m plus 1 comma n is equal to m upon m plus n into beta of m comma n let us proceed with lhs lhs is beta of m plus 1 comma n then by using relation between beta gamma function that is this beta of m plus 1 comma n can be written as gamma m plus 1 into gamma n upon gamma m plus n plus 1 now by using property of gamma function which states gamma n plus 1 is n into gamma n this gamma m plus 1 can be written as m into gamma m and gamma m plus n plus 1 can be written as m plus n into gamma m plus n now we put this m upon m plus n in one bracket and outside we have gamma m into gamma n upon gamma m plus n but this is nothing but beta of m comma n so we now got the required RHS, hence proved. Now let us go ahead for next example. Here we are asked to prove beta of x comma x is 1 by 2 raised to 2x minus 1 into beta of x comma half. Let us start with LHS which is beta of x comma x. Using beta gamma relation we can write this beta of x comma x as gamma x into gamma x upon gamma x plus x that is gamma 2x. Now by looking at this gamma 2x I just recall this duplication formula where I can see this gamma 2 is appearing. So this gamma 2x reminds me this gamma 2m. Now this gamma x upon gamma 2x can be obtained from this statement. Look at on this side of this duplication formula we have gamma m and on the other side we have gamma 2m. So if I take this gamma 2m on the other side, I will have value of gamma m upon gamma 2m which is root pi upon 2 raised to 2m minus 1 into gamma m plus half. So this gamma x upon gamma 2x can be written as root pi upon 2 raised to 2x minus 1 into gamma x plus half into gamma x as it is. Now we rearrange these terms, we take out this 1 upon 2 raised to 2x minus 1 like this and we write this gamma x inside this bracket. We also write root pi as gamma of half because in one of the property of gamma function we have seen gamma of half is root pi. So by rearranging the terms we have 1 upon 2 raised to 2x minus 1 outside and inside the bracket we have gamma half into gamma x upon gamma x plus half. But by this relation between gamma and beta, we can write this statement as beta of x comma half. So this is the required RHS and hence we can say this is proved. Let's go ahead for last example. Here we are asked to prove beta of m comma m into beta of m plus half comma m plus half is equal to pi by m into 2 raised to 1 minus 4m. Let's proceed with LHS. LHS is beta m comma m into beta of m plus half comma m plus half. Using beta gamma relation we can write beta m comma m as gamma m into gamma m upon gamma m plus m that is gamma 2m. Similarly this beta m plus half comma m plus half can be written as gamma m plus half into gamma m plus half upon gamma of 2 times m plus half that is gamma of 2m plus 1. Now using property of gamma function which state gamma n plus 1 is equal to n into gamma n this gamma 2m plus 1 can be written as 2m into gamma 2m. So now we have gamma m square gamma m plus half square as well as gamma 2m square and 2m on this side. So we write this statement as gamma m into gamma m plus half upon gamma 2m whole square and that 2m coming out of this is as it is. Now by looking at this gamma 2m I recall that duplication formula over where I see gamma 2m. So value of this gamma m into gamma m plus half upon gamma 2m 
from duplication formula can be written as root pi upon 2 raised to 2m minus 1. So let us substitute this value for this bracket. So root pi square is pi and 2 raised to 2m minus 1 is 2 raised to 4m minus 2. Like this. This 1 by 2m as it is. Now this 2 raised to 4m minus 2 into 2 raised to 1 becomes 2 raised to 4m minus 1. Now finally we write this pi by m as it is and when we take this 2 raised to 4m minus 1 in the numerator we got 2 raised to 1 minus 4m which is the required RHS. Hence proved. I hope guys you understood all these solutions. Please write me in comment box whether you are able to solve the practice examples or not. Please also write me the difficulties that you face while solving practice examples. Thank you all of you. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe my YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get updates about my new videos.